Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about choosing a Windows automation tool or selecting a Windows automation tool. Yeah, now let's do that. Hey, everybody, it's Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, this is Joe Glines out of Dallas, Texas. We're going to do some. Uh, Fun talking with AutoHotKey today. What, what was our topic today, Jackie? Uh, choosing a Windows automation tool. Yeah. So um, now everyone listening to this, uh, you know, we we probably use AutoHotKey, but uh, you know, we, we we decided to go through some of the um the main topics. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Jackie. We kind of grouped them ahead of time to say, you know, the, the top three leading leading tools out there: Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere, and UiPath. For multiple reasons, which we'll probably get into as we discuss them, we're grouping those all together as kind of like one way, one approach for a Windows automation tool. Um, and then there's Auto It, which is in a lot of ways very similar to Auto Hotkey, and then Auto Hotkey. Yeah, sure. Um, let's start off in the first. So cost, right? Which obviously that's one. That's the reason why we were looking at this. Uh, Blue Prism, Automation Anywhere, UiPath. We know from talking to you know people that have worked installing these tools, they can cost a phenomenal amount of money. Um, apparently, and I know at least two of them now have some solutions that are you know free for you to use if you don't go over certain limitations. Mm. Um, but uh, generally speaking, like we're talking when I talk about. A big amount of money, you know. We're talking about like ten thousand dollars per license, um, and then you, you need a, a license for the development. Uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Not scope, but, uh, environment versus yeah. your, um, you know, uh, real world environment. I mean, it's and that's for like one bot because they only let you do one thing with one bot, right? So it's and then there's the cost for the uh, the coders to to actually come out and they usually get paid. Uh, I'm sorry. The, company will charge like two thousand dollars a day to have an on-site developer you know working on your stuff so for, mm -hmm. for these tools that's where we're like wow that's some significant costs um something definitely that really pulls you apart from uh, people using auto it and auto hotkey yeah absolutely of course the, the two thousand a day for having people come out sure enough if if you have people using our hotkey or audit or any of the other uh, things. If you have chained them yourself, your costs are probably less. But if you're hiring people outside of, of your own environment, sure, um, I'm, I don't see auto it or our hotkey order solutions of that type being that costly. No, I, I usually keep it down to eighteen hundred dollars a day when I charge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, that's 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 an amount. That's yeah. for sure. Um, why don't you handle the next bullet, Jackie? Yeah, power or capabilities of automated programs, which which of course leads into what can actually be done with the tool, right? So we, of course, being our hard key users, know that. In Windows, it's it's really limited what you can't do, so to speak. And auto it is so similar. So we're pretty sure it can do at least everything that our hard key can do or something close. Uh, Blue Prism and the others are more of a black hole to us. What can be do, uh, done? We have talked to people who have used the tools and Many of them say, yeah, you can do many of the things that you can with uh, the tools we normally use, but some of them still come with limits. Some of them that have these um, recording capabilities are still limited when it comes to becoming more advanced and you still have someone to sit there and code. And the code might be much more involved to actually make than using something open source like our hotkey or anything like that. So, yeah. Well, it, and to clarify that, Jackie, because at least my understanding is with Blue Prism, Automation, Anywhere, and UiPath, they're all GUI-based tools. And at least with, I think it's Automation Anywhere, I'm, I, I think on the other two, 
you don't actually even have an option to insert literal code, right? You're you're dragging and dropping and creating GUIs, but of course, which which is writes code in the background. Just so don't get me wrong, I don't think there's some crazy thing going on here. But the developer, because I know the people we talked to, they were so frustrated they couldn't just write a simple line of code, right? Like they had to, you know, drag and drop and create GUIs, which can take a lot longer when you know exactly what you're trying to do. That's a much slower, you know, in order for you to develop the program you're working on, it takes a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. Compared to someone used to to writing out uh, the, the more bare bone parts in a script or whatever, um, actually having to circumvent uh, things that have been programmed in a certain way by using other parts of, of, of software like auto and automation software. Um, yeah, it, it can really take up unnecessary time instead of you just writing it the way you want it to work. That's that's for sure. And time, the time it takes to develop is an important part um, when you want to compare which uh, automation tool you want to choose. So absolutely, that's that's a big one. If you're using it, the way it's meant to be, you're just using the GUI and your automations are fairly simple. Sure, you might be able to save some time with these automation uh, softwares, but if you're doing something a bit more complex, it's probably a good idea to be able to actually write it from the bottom up. So often yeah. it will take less time. Yeah, and, and the other thing, that I, the irony to me as well is, generally speaking, people write programs that, that have GUIs, which helps, I'm gonna call it a developer for lack of better term at this point, um, the person building the automation to not have to have, you know, the same level of experience, right? That they, they, can, they can do things because the, someone has predefined it for them Oh, I need to do this, you know, and, and really often they can be advanced syntax, but they don't need to know because now they have a structure for doing this stuff, right? Um, so it's kind of ironic. We're talking about these tools where they're charging to me a fortune, um, enable it where they don't have to have experts actually building the code, right? Which is kind of counterintuitive. You would think, you know, you're going to have, when you're spending a fortune, you would have the best of the best actually developing the code. Uh, but their tools are are so advanced that often you don't actually need you know the, that person. I mean, they they put in the money in the front end, right, to to build a good tool that they can have people that don't necessarily know all the advanced stuff um, on the back end, you know, developing with it, right, with their GUI system. Yeah, it's an interesting way to put it. If what you're doing is um, is something that the, the, the software developers had thought about when they made the tool, sure enough, you might get the best solution by using something like that. But if it's not, if it's something a little outside the box where someone experienced in actually programming or automating something with code, uh, might find a solution that works um, very, very well with what you need where with the other solutions where it's like pick and choose, it, you might end up with something that it works, but is less stable. Yeah, yeah. Ian, I thought we were gonna go with that is, um, there's there's a, a, a very big hope that people have created these robust tools that solve every problem, right? And that, that generally speaking, when you have tools like I use SPSS and there's a whole GUI framework for SPSS, but that there's syntax too. And you can use the GUI thing to write the syntax for you. Um, but however, you can do much more with the syntax than you can with the GUIs, right? So if you don't have a way to, you know, if you're trying to solve a problem and someone hasn't built it into the GUI and there is no way to submit code, actual syntax or write freehand, you know, you're screwed, right? Like, like it's it could be really, really difficult to, Jump, you got to jump through a lot of hoops to try to figure out a way to solve a problem. And I know from talking to someone, um, they've run into that with automation anywhere of like, I just want to do this one thing. And in, in, in auto hotkey, it's a one line thing and I can do it in a heartbeat, but automation anywhere doesn't have it. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, and uh, as we also have uh, the ability to find solutions, right? The, the, the ability, one, something that I've used a lot is look for what others have done. And, and sure enough, it, if it becomes advanced enough, you might also run into a dead end in the Arhatki community. Um, but uh, if you have an even bigger community like Python or an even bigger one, one of the C communities or anything like that, sure enough, the ability to find pre-built solutions. I don't think you'll see much of that if you go with these GUI solutions because sure enough, someone might have solved it, but the way they did it is so much more different than from what you might have uh, a need for, or it's kept inside the company mm -hmm. uh, because there's no developer who has the uh, rights to it or is proud of having done it. So he shared it with the world. Uh, instead, it's just kept uh, behind locked doors, a kind of closed source. So, yeah. Well, and to your point, Jackie, um, and, and maybe there is a way you can do this, because I know in VBA, well, VBA is syntax up. Um, but with auto hotkey or auto it, we know, we see literal syntax examples of things. But when your tool is a complete GUI, how do you share those? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I know with um, Pullover's macro creator, yeah. he had the ability to export um, his macros to our hotkey code. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that these other tools don't have anything similar. I, I don't know them well enough. Right. But yeah, just uh, off the top of my head, it's like, it's, it's still, it's doing something, but you actually don't know what it's doing. Yeah. And they, they probably have a way to like create a widget or something, right? Is what they do. And, and they, they, it's a way they bundle together. There's the stuff you do. That you could share. I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, sure that they have some way to do it. But to your point, how do you, boy? Then you're really relying on people tagging everything properly because you can't, you don't have the advantage of SEO and searching for keywords that's in the code, right? All you have is like just what they name the thing, um, which, yeah. Uh, so anyway. Yeah. So, so trying to find the right solution, you, you might never actually be out looking for it when you use those tools. Um, so, so it, it might be a void thing to compare if you're not really looking for how anybody else solved it, because it's always a matter of solving the individual uh, situation in this company or in that situation or in, in whatever thing you're trying to automate. But yeah, with, with our normal community, with our hot key community and, and most likely also the auto community, the helpfulness of the community is one of the things where I'm unsure if these different tools, sure they have communities, but if they don't have stuff to share uh, or if the stuff they're sharing is, yeah, it's great. I'm so happy with it. And there's nothing more. It's, it's hard to really feel how helpful a community is. Yeah, and I know um, just cause I've seen it firsthand, uh, if we start drilling down to some of the differences between auto it and auto hotkey, actually, one step step back up one step before I go there was the uh, you know the how long the thing's been around. I know you talked about being able to search and find your you know examples that you're looking for, um, but what one of the other ones, which is the you know how long is the tool you're trying to use been in existence, right? Is there a really big history because it's still kind of it's related, highly related, but if, if you're dealing with a new tool, just the, the libraries of coders aren't going to be, you know, as vast, right, um, yeah. in that sense. But, um, yeah. but then getting back into now, okay, so I don't have a, I can't find my solution. I have to write it for him. But maybe someone who knows what they're doing on this is work something similar would help me. I um, mean, that's where time and time again, if there was awards to hand out, I would say the auto hockey community would, would win, like, at least compared to the stuff we're looking at, right? Like, especially compared to auto it. Um, auto hockey people are so friendly and helpful and willing to help people with their, you know, goals. And, the, and there's, you know, there's the, the forum, Discord, um, the IRC chats, right? I think that's still people go there, the subreddit. Um, 
yeah, there's a lot of places where you can go that people and Facebook now is really honestly that people are posting more and more stuff there and getting help. Um, a lot of great places. Yeah, and the interesting part about that is that I've actually always liked uh, our hot key for its simplicity with searching for solutions because for many years, the only place to actually find an auto hotkey solution was on the farm, right? It, it, that was where you could find um, a question, probably with some code and an answer with some working code. And, and I loved that. Just if the title of the topic seemed to be relevant, you probably didn't need to go more than one page to actually find someone who had solved your, your issue. And uh, when, when I've done it more widely on the web with other languages, that, that's, that's, some of them have been so large for so long that it's, um, it's almost impossible to weed out where a solution for, for your issue is. So it's, it's twofold. If it comes too big, it, it might not be something you share if, this, if the issue is too small. Uh, and if it is smaller, you might not have the advanced enough code examples out there. And that's what I think some of these automation tools might be lacking is that they're, they're there, but they're new and it's probably not the easiest thing to share whatever you did. And if you did something, you were probably just good at combining the different methods available in the GUI. So it's probably not worth really sharing because hey, someone else could also add the loopability and those three other things and do the same stuff. Uh, whereas if you actually did that in code, would probably be inclined to actually share it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other one, which I was going to add on to that was um, the point I just forgot. <laughs> Sorry, it was, it was right there. Um, the, oh, I thought you were going to say was like, I've run into this with Python, with auto hotkey, like we generally speaking have one forum, right? And then and, and there, there's a couple of places we'll go, right? There's the forum, there's Reddit, there's, um, even a Wikipedia like kind of thing, right? There's several like Rosetta code, but there's one of these things. Like look for Python, like in, in like, you know, it's crazy, right? How many different places you can go. Um, and, and again, it's just, it, once your tool gets so big and so popular, it, it's it got its pluses and minuses, right? Um, so yeah. Um, the other yeah. one though, which I was gonna bring up was, and I think I think this works the same for auto it, uh, but, the really cool thing to me with auto hotkey is when you are trying to solve something um, like let's say in Excel or Word or whatever, you know what, if I can't find a post already on, on the forum or the subreddit or, you know, anywhere, I can go to, to, um, to uh, Stack Overflow and look for a VBA solution. And it's so similar in the syntax that I can easily adapt it. I can leverage that someone else has solved it in another language and just tweak it. Um, I'd be very surprised if that's at all possible with the Blue Prism automation anywhere UiPath. Now, do you know with AutoIt is is their implementation of Com very similar also? So it's similar to VBA. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it probably depends on your level of uh, coding ability. Most likely, as as if you read up on people who are have that as their education. I've been doing it for many years. It's it's a matter of learning the syntax because the, the mindset behind this is always the same. And fair enough, but with UiPath and Blue Person and, and those, probably doing stuff so differently from everybody else because it's their own um, mm -hmm. uh, architecture or whatever you would yeah. call it. Um, it. It's probably gonna be hard to be able to utilize other uh, communities ways of doing it so so yeah absolutely helpfulness of community popularity of the tool stuff like that really does come into effect when when you get to those a little bit more tricky problems you're trying to solve 
Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, which, which we had discussed a bit of this earlier, but the, the cost of development per hour, like, you know, how much does it cost? Uh, which you brought up a really good point earlier. Are you hiring, which, which I think is a really important point. Are you actually hiring people? The idea, and I think Blue Prism, Automation, Anywhere in your iPad, is you, you have a task that want, you want to automate it. Um, they know the experts that come in and will automate it. And then the people go away. They leave behind someone. They kind of half train that can really patch things if they break. But they're probably not very rarely actually writing new automations. Um, even then, they got all the licensing fees that you did, right? Um, so the whole development, like, I don't, I don't know if the cost for the per hour, I think that's factored in the front end just with your whole job, right? Um, with other tools like AutoIt and AutoHotKey, that's where I think it becomes more prevalent of something that's going to be done with your own staff, right? Your own employees generally, or you hire an expert, right? Yeah, exactly. You can hire someone and because the things might differ uh, quite a lot in, in what you use them for, sure enough, you can hire someone to do a small project. You, you want to move some stuff on screen or you want to have a, 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 the ability to arrange all your uh, different windows exactly or you want something to dock here and act when this happens and stuff like that. Pretty simple, small projects. Sure enough, uh, hiring um, some expert in AutoHotKey might be cheaper than, than actually training your staff. But I think a lot of the people in the AutoIt and the AutoHotKey community are people who are self-trained, who are looking for something to ease whatever task they have at hand. And it probably bubbles up from um, from the bottom. Someone who has built an ability over a bit of time. They might not be the best there is, but if you then nurture that, you could probably have a, quite a good automator on your hands within a reasonable cost compared to going out and hiring uh, and buying something licensed like this. Right. That's for sure. Yeah, I know from talking to you um, at your company, they use one of those big tools, right? And if you had had the interest, you know, in, in suggesting to them that, hey, you know what, I, I could probably do some of this stuff. Like, it, it's quite possible that I know that, you know, that would have changed your job entirely. Um, and it isn't necessarily what you were, but as far as, I mean, this, the skill set you have, you probably could have automated a lot of the stuff at let's say at least near the same level of how they got it automated um, and, and financially wise, the company conceivably could have saved a lot of money. Um, but again, that would have changed, you know, your whole career and what you're doing and, and everything. Yeah. And, and of course I talked with a few people in that before I actually uh, suggested it. And some of the reasons for choosing this is because uh, they're, they have the money to do so, but, they're buying more than just a single employee's time. Mm -hmm. they're, they're also paying much more than what a single employee would cost. So, so you can't compare it in that way, but they, they loved that they were able to hire a separate company to do the automation. And then that company would have all the headaches of right. making sure that that kept working for us. Um, which is kind of weird because I'm pretty sure we actually pay them if anything breaks. So, yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, I, I got this email, I think I forwarded it to you, I can't remember, but um, it was from John Carlton, who's this guru at copywriting. And uh, the whole email was like talking about why do people hire experts, right? And, um, and, this, and it goes through it and basically he says this, no, this, and, this, and he finally says, they hire experts to, to cover their ass, right? They want someone to point to and blame when things go wrong and say, you do that, you fix it, you whatever, but they can point and say, it's not me. But of course, if it also, everything goes great, then they can say that I took this, you know, I, I hired this person to give me the credit. Um, but it was yeah. really an interesting thing of like businesses. And the other one, which I thought is actually what you're going to mention was they now have a fancy company name they can put at like the stockholder share me or whatever you're doing, right? Like they can put it up there and saying, we're working with this company. 
using AI, using advanced technology, look how cool we are, right? Um, if you just said we're automating stuff, there's no fanfare, right? There's no like, oh, that's cool. No one's impressed. Uh, they should be, but um, it doesn't yeah. carry the same weight, unfortunately. No, and that's that's how it carries over to how much it will actually help your career, right? It's it's right. like, yeah, I'm I'm proficient at using uh, Pro Prism, or I can automate anything with automate anywhere, or uh, I worked a lot with UiPath. Sure enough, it it might work well. And, and mentioning auto it or auto hotkey or saying, yeah, I actually did that at one time. I had a piece of paper listing how much time I've saved some people um, by automating you know, pieces of their workday. And it was quite a lot of time when compared over time, but it worked for the job that I needed because it had meaning for that job. But, um, they wouldn't have known what Blue Prism Automation Anywhere or UiPath, just as little as they actually knew what our hotkey was. So it does really depend on what you're trying to build for yourself. With learning something like our hotkey, you can automate your own daily tasks and become faster. But Blue Prism Automation Anywhere and UiPath are often a more, um, Company-wide solution might be a way of putting it. Agreed. Um, so, so I think the two are separate in that manner. Even though bigger companies are also using AutoHotKey or uh, Audit for that matter to automate big processes. But yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree with that. Um, and it, it, the other one, if you are interested, if you are, if you're looking at it instead of from the business perspective of which tool should I you know, use. If you're looking at it for a career path kind of thing, you know, if you if you start learning Blue Prism Automation or UiPath, generally speaking, be ready to travel because most of those people go on site, move around the country, you know, and go implement stuff, and then you know there are different places, you know, Monday through Thursday. Often, they fly in, stay there most of the week, fly home on the weekends. Um, it's a it's a grind, right? It's a lot of work, travel, um, and some people love it. Um, Hey, you know, it just depends what you want. And they make pretty good money. Um, I think at least six figures in the US. Uh, it's With having very little training, that's a great thing to step into. Um, now, again, it, I'm not saying there are no corporate jobs for like working at a Fortune 500 company if you know these things. It's just they're much fewer, right? The, the, the person they leave behind usually isn't really advanced train they, they know enough just again if something breaks but they're not developing new things i wish things were different i wish they were i think they but again it gets back to the licensing fees right even if you do come up just because you have someone trained and you create a new bot then you're you know at another 10 grand a year or more for you know the license and if you want to have multiple instances anyway it's 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 not cheap yeah the, the general business idea of these automation tools is of course that people should keep paying for them Right, so, so they're of course not interesting in actually delivering a full-fledged developer uh, by the end of it to you. It's, it's, it's okay to have someone who can take care of your daily business and stuff like that, but if, if it really becomes a new automation or anything like that, it's, it's a matter of them still wanting to earn more money. Mm -hmm. you, you know, the other thing that we didn't bring up earlier was we did address how, um, those the the, the blue prism automation where ui path we should have given that a, a a set name to be easier but um they can do some really advanced ai stuff built into the tool right um auto hotkey and auto it don't have these things necessarily built into them however uh there is some some amazing stuff you could write a program for or because you can connect to public apis uh, you know web service apis you, know, you can find web service stuff to do the stuff automation anywhere in them are doing and you know, write a program to, and there might be little fees associated too. But compared to the licensing fees, it's nothing, right? Unless you're doing serious, serious volume. Um, even yeah, that, I yeah, think, yeah. It really is. You you can use quite a different tool set if you want to go the sky route, or if you want to go public APIs, or whatever you might want to do. And as as I know you have done, Joe, you 
you you might have paid for the ability to send an amount of emails in one go or send uh, phone messages or whatever it might be and then it comes at a cost right or you want to get specific information about uh, an address or whatever it could be and you'd pay a company a set amount of money for that information but even if you did thousands of those it it would only run up to dollars right? <laughs> Often, yeah uh, so so when you compare that to to a running fee of thousands of dollars of these other tools it's it's absolutely it, even if you needed to i don't know translate hundreds of texts a week or whatever using um, an online translation tool um, with the help of like auto hotkey or something like that would be fully um, within reason and not very costly compared to I, i've actually done it yeah yeah and and yeah the cost is minimal um it's crazy yeah it's amazing um yeah another point though in is uh the whole open now let's talk well i guess it applies to all of them open source versus closed source right and auto hotkey is open source um and that's where why don't you go ahead and chime in on this i told you earlier i'm i i understood when you said it i'm like oh yeah that's right but why don't you go ahead and expand on it? Yeah, on a, uh, the, the whole movement of open source where you actually have the ability to go and look at the code of what's executing on your machine. So you don't have any malicious stuff. You don't have a company collecting information you don't want them to. And, and you just have this um, shared community around a tool uh, where you could expect there to be multiple developers on our hotkey. And there has been multiple developers over time. And right now we have two pretty active forks, right? We have the, the our hotkey, which is the one we usually call the L, uh, maintained by Lecticos and, and a few helpers on the GitHub. And you have uh, hotkey it, who is maintaining H. And I don't know how many uh, are helping him, but yeah. just the ability to be more people unpaid to work on the same piece of code, where with something closed source, you could still have people unpaid, but they wouldn't just turn up. They wouldn't just be there one day. You you'd need to active, actively look for them or they would need to actually reach out and you would have some kind of process to decide if they could have access or not. And then you're over into the fully closed source where you have no idea as a user of what you're actually using. You have no idea of learning how that piece of code is working and you have no way to actually copy what is being done. And that's one of the fun things about our hotkey. We are a lot of users using our hotkey. It's a scripting language, but all of us would be able to go into that hotkey source and see how to do it in C++. Mm -hmm. Because all of what we're reading, uh, writing is interpreted by our hotkey interpreter and then being performed as C++ code. So in essence, if we were willing or good enough, we could do it with all that much extra code and typing that would be needed to do it in C++. Which... Well, it, was, it was something I was gonna to allude to earlier was with the, the, the GUI type things, you're relying on people who have created a GUI to do what you wanna do. Um, I, I kind of feel it's very related in this too, is the open source versus closed source. If you, know, you find something that you, you wanted to, you wanted it to behave in a certain way, um, you could appeal to the, the, you know, the person that built it and see if they would adjust it. Um, however, with open source, if you have the skill or can hire someone, you could actually get them to change the program to work the way you want it to, right? Which is pretty darn cool. Yeah, and I remember uh, in our community that it, it being said a few times that, yeah, uh, you can do that in H and yep. then people would present that to, to the developer of the, uh, basic or L and they would be like, yeah, but it's done in a bit too hackish way. It, it 
it works sure enough but it, it might not be stable or it's outside of the way it's meant to be done um I, i'm h seems to be fully stable and stuff like that but i get the sentimental value of actually being like I'm not sure it should be done in that way. It might end up actually overusing your CPU or failing in weird points with unexpected uh, errors or whatever it might be. And when you have a tool like Blue Prism Automation Anywhere and UI Path, they will of course do everything in their power to make code that works stably but if for some reason it's failing you or it every morning you come there is an error and stuff like that you have quite a long way to actually get it fixed either you're paying the company enough for them to be on it immediately or yeah. you will have to wait yeah. and there will be no way for you to get it fixed because it is closed source there would be no way for you to hire someone else to fix it because it's the company's property. You'd you'd be at their mercy. Yep. Which which I know, and from working for Fortune 500 companies most of my life, um, a lot of those big companies they they actually again, which is what you mentioned earlier, they like they, they're usually big guys, so they like working with closed source because. The security, you know, of not having people inject stuff and having you get past things, um, even though, like you said, it's open source, you can peek in there. Um, but they have someone to point out and blame and say, because you said they're, they're spending enough money, we need you to fix this now. And the, those companies will actually take action because they're big guys. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, one we, we kind of talked to earlier, but just, you know, is the um, activity user base, is it growing or shrinking, right? And that's where. We, you and I have looked at this in the past, and, and at least when you look at AutoIt versus AutoHotKey, AutoIt apparently seems to be kind of decreasing, um, and AutoHotKey has been going up. Uh, I think because of the newness of them, Blue Prism Automation Anywhere and UiPath, those are growing like crazy just because the RPA, robotics process automation industry, is growing like crazy. Yeah, yeah, and I'm happy for them, and we're, we've been happy that AutoHotKey has been doing well. And whatever the reasons for those trends that we're seeing actually are, I'm not sure. I know that AutoEd has um, years ago said, we don't want to have anything to do with games, right? It, it probably right. meant that a lot of people who are at home, who might have a game that they're automating, because I'm not sure people would be automating that much work when they're at home. Um, and if people are not allowed to use it in their workplace, then they'll use it at home. And that's probably one of the places where we saw the shift in trends um, when, when AutoEd made that decision. And then um, the last one, which, which was, uh, I think it focuses more on Auto Hotkey and AutoEd. Now, this is one you brought up before. Um, you want to talk about it with the mindset? Yeah, yeah, if the loosely typed and the, the strongly typed um, yeah. ways of, of writing syntax. And sure enough, we like the, the loosely typed um, way of doing it. But actually, over time, the more we've used it, we have moved away from it, both you and me, probably. Yeah. Um, I don't use many of the loosely typed things that our hotkey offers. I probably do without knowing, uh, but I don't seek them out. I, yeah. I don't have that big of a need to, to go and, and um, not use a single uh, comma here or because I can actually just use an equal sign instead of a colon equal there. So I don't need to type uh, the quotes for a string yeah. and stuff like that. Right. I actually do do that, I type out the needed uh, symbols to actually become more strongly typed, just because that's what I've become used to. And it's needed when you do calm and it's needed when you do del calls and it's needed in all, all different places. So 
strongly typed makes sense because it's a good way to make sure that you're typing consistent code. Um, but uh, with the loosely typed, when you're in, when you're getting new people on board, it makes so much sense that the code will still work even if you miss that character there. Yeah, it's, it's very crazy. forgiving is what the way I think of it. It's, yeah, it, it's, it's ultimately frustrating if you're sitting there and you're typing a hotkey and all you want it to do is uh, type an A 50 times and uh, then it should tell it that it had done it. Uh, and then you actually miss the comma before the message box. And for some reason, your script is throwing an error and you can't compile and you're looking through it all and you're just like, what actually happened? And with the more loosely typed where you can just initialize and a variable, you can just use it or you can just pass it and it doesn't matter. Uh, it just works. That's, that's very, very forgiving when you're new. You know, that, that actually does bring up, um, I, I totally agree with you. Um, I, it, 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 especially looking at when people from auto it discuss auto hotkey, uh, people who are true programmers don't like programming in auto hotkey because of its, its looseness, right? It's, yeah. they, they, they really find it frustrating and, and you know, just, they, they really uh, you know, put, put some bad words in there, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, I find it, I find it helpful because I'm a sloppy programmer. Right. And so, and, and, and I'm not a programmer, right? So it, for me, I, I like the fact that I can kind of um, fake it till I make it, you know, my code will work. Um, it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll handle some of the stuff. Um, but, but one thing I, we didn't mention earlier, which when you were talking about something in there, it, uh, it made me think about conceptually wise is the other tools that you have available, like, you know, a good debugger, um, a good solid editor to work with, you know, the other tools that kind of help you do your automation um, are, are, are something that are helpful, you know, very helpful. And um, I think there's probably, especially between auto and on hockey, they're very similar. Um, I'm not sure with Blue Prism Automation and UiPath if they're, I know I, I actually have used Automation Anywhere. I definitely use that. I think I tried Blue Prism for a little bit. I just don't remember if it was one of that or UiPath. I can't remember, but um I found their tools very non-intuitive, um, but again, I didn't um, dive into it deep. You also said earlier today is something about some of them having some free version or some mm -hmm. free way of using some of it. Um, and I was like, why, why would they have that if, if, if they have enough customers? But then it just hit me now that if, I'm having a problem I can't solve. I go to the Art hotkey community and I ask, mm -hmm. is anybody else able to solve this? And they would ask me, what, what website is that? What windows is that? What program is that? What, what thing is that? Can you show me? And they would actually go and try and see if they could do it or if my code worked or if what errors it came up with. But if you need Blue Prism Automation Anywhere or UiPath to even do that, the ability to go out and seek help is almost nullified, right? It's, it's like no private person or any kind of random guy out there is gonna be able to afford investing in that just to help some stranger. Right. Whereas with the open source and the free, like auto, it, it, it's the, the ability to go out and seek help is just so vast. Yeah. And to clarify, we, I don't think we mentioned that maybe I said it, but um, yeah, auto hotkey and auto, you know, auto hotkey kind of came spawned from auto it, um, but both are free. Right, there are no charges. Auto it though is a closed source, and auto hotkey is open source. I don't remember if yeah. I actually said the auto it was a closed source. Um, you can still compile, you can create your programs, you can compile them, you can share them, you can make money off them. That's not a problem. Um, but uh, I don't, you know, like with Blue Prism Automation Anywhere in UiPath, 
boy, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, oh, you know the other really big distinction, which I mean, granted, we were talking about Windows automation tools, right? Which implies we're automating some other programs. But with Auto It and Auto Hotkey, you can create your own programs, right? You don't have to be always just automating other tools. You can build your own GUI system or whatever you want to do, right? It's it's yeah. it's more of what I do these days. I don't even as often automating other tools. I'm writing completely new tools. Um, but uh, it's something to consider of, of it, it would be very limiting as far as to what you can do if you're learning the in UI path and you know automation anywhere. You're always fixing other tools, which is nothing wrong with that, right? But um, I, I like the flexibility of being able to develop whatever I want, right? It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope you guys yeah. all enjoyed that. Yeah, absolutely. I hope too. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. We'll see you soon. Yeah, bye. bye. All right, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, right? The more you do that, the more people will see this and we get to help a lot of people. Yeah, and remember to comment if you enjoyed that episode of the Automators Podcast, you might also like this one. Have you ever wondered uh, how long you should make your variable names? Yeah, you know, or given much thought to the types of things you're going to use, the words or letters you're going to use to name your variables. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally get that. Um, but today we'll cover some uh, pros and cons of actually uh, making short versus long variable names. All right, let's add it.